Welcome back, students. We're done doing everything we're going to do probably with our research design, except for reference how a lot of the new techniques that you're going to learn link back to how you test hypotheses. Now we're going to start a new departure. We're going to, de we're going to start understanding univariate analysis. So let's get started by developing an understanding of levels of measurement. We're going to look at what numbers in social research, how they relate to one another, what is measurement, we're going to look at the levels of measurement, and we're going to look at some of the rules that help us identify which are the appropriate level of measurement of our variables. To start off with, everything can be made into a number. When you assign a number to a variable or a set of numbers to the outcome of a variable, sometimes there will be a natural linkage. For example, if you know that someone is 67 inches tall or 5 foot 7, you understand clearly the relationship between the number and the response for the variable. In other cases, it's not so clear. The reason we assign these numbers is basically because when we do our analysis, we're going to use computers, and computers, frankly, are generally stupid. You're the smart one. You're the operator. Let's look at our levels of measurement. We have the following levels of measurement. We have nominal level of measurement, which uh, involves naming or labeling things, for example, genders and political parties, uh, category of criminal offense, etc. We have ordinal levels, which involves ordering our categories, for example, socioeconomic status or preference for a candidate or how strongly you uh, support an idea or how strongly you agree with an idea. We have the interval level of measurement, which involves ordering things and providing exact distances between them. For example, you could think of uh, the Fahrenheit scale or the Celsius scale or an SAT score. We have the ratio level of measurement, which is like an interval level of measurement, but it includes a true or absolute zero point. And we have a special level of measurement called dichotomies, and we can make anything into a dichotomy. We'll discuss that in a moment. Numbers have properties. Sometimes numbers have countable outcomes. When numbers have countable outcomes, we call them discrete numbers. And if you have, for example, think of number of children. You have zero children, one children, or two children. If you have a number that's infinitely divisible, then we have what's called a continuous number. For example, imagine you were standing at a bus stop and you were timing the length of time between the first bus and the second bus. That could come in 10 minutes and 47 seconds. It could come in 9 minutes and 23.8 seconds. It's an infinitely divisible point. That would be an example of a continuous number series. Measurement is the process of assigning numerals to observations according to rules. These numerals are referred to as the values of the variable we're measuring. If we want to measure something, we have to make up a set of rules that specify how the numbers are assigned to our observations. For example, let's say we had a question on a survey that asked, do you strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, disagree, or strongly disagree, that the president is doing an excellent job? Now, the way we assign numbers need to follow a set of rules that make sense. So you can see in this example here, we have strongly agree 5, agree 4, neither agree nor disagree 3, disagree 2, and strongly disagree 1. And so you can see that the numbers are serving the, pur the purpose of maintaining the order of these response choices. And that's going to be important as we think about our rules and levels of measurement. The rules are going to determine the level or quality of the measurement that we achieve. The level of measurement determines what kind of tests can be performed on the resulting data that we collect. The level of measurement that can be achieved depends upon the nature of the property itself being measured and the choice that we use for data collection procedures. For example, you can imagine uh, an amusement park ride that says, if you're taller than this hand, you're allowed to go on the roller coaster. And if you're not taller than this hand, you're not permitted to go on the roller coaster. That would be one way to measure height. Another way to measure height would be to use a tape measure. Now, the one is more accurate, clearly. And so the choice of the data collection procedure might provide more precision. The general rule is to aim for the highest possible level of measurement because higher levels of measurement enable us to perform more powerful and more varied tests. But these rules that we come up with will provide the basis for classifying, ordering, or quantifying our observations. 
So let's start with the nominal level of measurement. With the nominal level of measurement represents the lowest level of measurement. It involves classifying a variable into two or more categories and then sorting our observations into the appropriate category. The numbers are simply served to, label, to help us label the categories. If I had a number assigned to hair color, for example, and I had one was red, two was blonde, three was brunette, and four was gray, and five was white, let's say, and maybe even six for bald, they have no hair. Then by assigning numbers to these categories, all I'm doing is providing numbers to help the, the computer keep it organized which category is which. And so if I have someone who has red hair, they would get you know, assigned a value of one, and that's how they'd be categorized. The numbers don't serve any other purpose. They don't maintain the sequence. The sequence is completely arbitrary. I could have just as easily have given re red hair the number of three or five, etc. So some examples of nominal level measurement would be things like ethnic origin, for example, uh, people who are Hispanic, people who are Asian, etc. You could imagine uh, sex, males and females. The first language someone speaks in the home, French, English, Spanish, Italian, Mandarin, etc. Or religions, Protestant, Catholic, Jewish, Islamic, etc. The rule here is that we do not assign the same number to different categories or different numerals to the same categories. Our categories must be both mutually exhaustive and exclusive, meaning that every observation should fall into one and only one of our categories. At the ordinal level of measurement, we're classifying a variable into sets of ordered categories and then sorting our observations into the appropriate category according to whether they have more or less of the property being measured. The categories stand in a hierarchical relationship to one another and the numbers serve to indicate the orders of the categories. With the ordinal level of measurement, we can only say that one observation has more or less of a property than the other. We cannot say how much more. Imagine a variable, church attendance, that goes from zero, never attends church, to one, attends church a couple times a year, two, a couple times a month, three, weekly, four, daily, or some such variable. Then we can understand that we're increasing in the amount of the property that we're observing, how frequently someone attends church, but we also understand that we don't have a precise measure. We can't subtract daily from a couple times a month, for example, that it doesn't make sense to perform a mathematical operation. Some examples of ordinal level variables would be things like the strength of someone's party loyalty, someone who's a strong partisan, a weak partisan, an independent who leads partisan, or a true independent or their social class, lower class, middle class, upper class, or how interested they are in politics, very interested, somewhat interested, somewhat not interested, not at all interested. At the interval level of measurement, we're classifying a variable into a set of order categories. However, they have an equal interval between them and the sorting of our observations into the appropriate category according to how much of the property they possess. There's a fixed and known interval or distance between each category, and the numbers actually have a quantitative meaning. They indicate how much of the property each observation has. So with interval level measurement, we can not only say that one observation has more of the property than the other, we can also say how much more. The data have properties of ordinal data, but the interval between the observations is expressed in terms of a fixed unit of measure. Interval data has values that are always numeric. For example, if Melissa has an SAT score of 1205 and Kevin has an SAT score of 1090, Melissa has an SAT score 115 points higher than Kevin. At the ratio level of measurement, we have all of the properties of interval level data and the ratio of the two values is meaningful. The variables such as um, time, height, distance, for example, use the ratio scale. Now what separates the ratio scale from an interval scale is ratio has a zero value that is meaningful and indicates an absence of the property that we're trying to measure. For example, think about the number of children that someone has. When we say that someone has zero children, one child, two children, etc., the zero point means a complete absence of the property we're trying to measure. They have no children. Another example of a ratio level variable 
might be the amount of money you have in your pocket right now. Some people might reach into their pocket and realize that they have $14.26. Others, who only use plastic, might realize that they have absolutely zero currency in their pocket. So it's a complete absence of currency. At the dichotomous level of measurement, this special level of measurement, I want you to think of it as a natural experiment that has a success condition and a fail condition. You can make anything into a dichotomy regardless of the underlying property of the level of measurement. For example, you can take a nominal level variable like hair color and you can code it according to whether a property is present or absent. Does someone have red hair or do they not have red hair? Or if you think of an ordinal level of measurement, you can think of one of those strongly agree, agree, neither agree nor disagree, disagree or strongly disagree questions. Take that question and say, I'm going to take everyone who agrees or strongly agrees as having the characteristic agreement and everyone else I'm going to put into the other category fail to agree. Dichotomous variables take on numerical values of zero if you fail to succeed and one if you meet whatever the success condition you've defined for your experiment. All right, so that's it. I think we have a good introduction to what numbers are and how they're used in social research. We have a sense as to how measurement is done and the rules of measurement and how the rules of measurement are important for determining the level of measurement. Mm -hmm.